Thanks for tuning in and welcome to episode 104 of the Runder Hills podcast, the one where we talk to Claire Whittingham. Runder the Hills podcast is sponsored by Cheer Charge. Cheer Charge make nutritious, tasty and easily digestible flapjacks and nut butters, including the delicious vegan range. Go and check them out at www.cheercharge.co.uk. I'm loving the orange uh, Jaffa cake protein bars at last, at long last. <laughs> One a day keeps the oh. hunger away. <laughs> Two a day. Yeah, and wouldn't I've, got, I've not got that many. <laughs> shorts and I know. I'm I'm bad. I'm, I, this is bad, Gary. I'm having one a day. I mean, just stop. Tell me, just well, stop. It is sports nutrition, isn't it? I think I could just a little um, little bit of protein boost before bed. A little cup of tea and a. Do you have it before bed? I have it as my mid morning pick me up. Oh, That's interesting. I have a piece of chocolate before bed. Is that really bad? <laughs> No, 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 no. <laughs> you're much, you have a much better relationship with food than I do. I think uh, I think it's great. I would probably stay awake at night stressing about that. Well, the other night I couldn't get to sleep and I was like tossing and turning and Brim was like, what's up? I was like, can't sleep. He's like, that's because you had a can of Diet Coke, a piece of chocolate and a cup of tea about 15 minutes ago and yeah. you're absolutely <laughs> buzzing. I was like, all right. But he is no good for that either. But he is rotten for a, a, bad, night, a bad night's sleep. Anyway enough about sleep how are you doing Eddie not been enough sleep I did set my alarm to get up early to go running yesterday didn't I was like I can't I can't yeah. I'm having an extra hour of snooze do it later <laughs> uh yes good I had a lovely week we had the Cavills come and stay Kim and Jason former friends of the show a couple of times um and they're off on their holidays in um I think Edna's the name of their camper van oh we could they came and stayed. We reckoned it was four years ago in the winter in the camper van, and they parked up on our drive like gypsies for a few weeks. Um, and uh, in the house at all? You're, oh, sometimes Kim, definitely not <laughs> Jason. Um, uh, and then now Edna's had a bit of a refresh, a refurb, and so they're off on their travels. So they came and uh, hung around for a bit, and it was lovely because they haven't seen the kids for like four years. They've not seen Evie since she wow. was like. And now she's got an opinion yeah. and um, decent on the hill. So I did some lovely running with Kim. I took her on a, you know, an Eddie special three hour. She's training for the marathon. So she's like nothing too hilly. It wasn't too hilly. Which what marathon? Was it? Sorry. Chester marathon. Oh, cool. Yeah. So um, we did a, like, it was about four hours, four hours. I don't know how far, I don't know how much climbing even, but it was quite a lot of climbing, but she was out in the mountains. Jester's not that hilly, I don't think, as far as marathons are concerned. No, but then we did do, so that was my session she did with me, and then we did, I ran flat with her on her, like, moderate marathon pace, um, and we found, we ran around the big loop, big lake, sorry, up here, um, and uh, she's, she's, she wants to do a good for age time, she'll smash it, she was really strong, she would yeah. go marathon pace. What's well, exciting, that, changing yeah. for Change your pace for, for, for Kim, that. Oh, change time. your pace for Eddie. I was like, she was like, uh, I was like, what pace do you want to run? And she's like, um, it's eight minute miles. I was like, oh, I can't run the last time I ran an eight minute mile <laughs> consistently for like an hour and a half. Um, and of course, with the app, we're running at altitude and on gravel. So I've got loads of excuses, but we yeah, did getting it all out. <laughs> um, and then I just quizzed poor Jason. I got Jason. As soon as he walked in, I was like, come on. Come uh. on. Uh, we, he has very kindly offered to help me with my spine trait. We didn't offer. I was like, you help me with yeah, no my choice. Uh, I was like, you can say no. And he's like, I'm not going to say no, Eddie. But, yeah, wow, he's got some experience, though, to draw from. It, well, so we went through. He was so kind. We went through all the kit. He got his kit out. He showed me what he used. I mean, it's invaluable, really. Little things. I'm not sure how much I'm going to share on the podcast because. Oh, I Eddie. <laughs> one for Eddie, one for the show. <laughs> I go, oh, that's a good idea. I keep that for Eddie. Um, so he went through all the kit. He was, I think he's pretty impressed with my kit arrangement Classic. already. If you think already, the ding, ding, ding. I got my bivy bag out that I bought and he was like, then he got his out and I was like, bivy bag envy. So I was like, oh no, I need that one. It's lighter, it's smaller. Oh, it's um, dangerous game, this Eddie. It's a dangerous game. Um, and so we've talked about the kit and we've gone, I even made a like written out plan and we started to go through the training. I don't know how much 
much people want to hear about that sort of like the what I'm sort of planning on doing. Do people want to hear that about? Yeah. <laughs> so we talked about like how I'm going to approach it. I won't go into like the full detail because we could be here all day. But um, he talked about how what he's done for his training before, what worked, what didn't want, which is what you want to hear, don't you? And then we looked at what I do already. Um, I've worked with Jason before about five years ago. So we got a really nice, lovely relationship. And um, so he knows me really well. And um, we sort of talked about what like is what do I need to become as a runner, what I need to, the challenges I need to be set and what basically how to plan. Cause that was my life. How do I plan the next four months so that I arrive on the spine, like fully ready, yeah. really strong, but not burnt out. Like, how do you get that? Um, how do you get that battle? Between like doing too much because it's a 200 plus mile race. I don't, yeah, I really don't know. Yeah, how, how do you like what? And so we talked about how we're going to do that and how we're going to handle the next four months. And so we're basically going to look at, I'll talk about just like the next couple of weeks. And I'm aiming to get to September when the kids go back as I am fresh and ready for ready for training and because I've just been ramping my training up from my injury and everything slowly settling down I'm actually in a really good place I haven't run over five hours this year okay I haven't done a big training block really I've done lots of training but I haven't actually finished off a training block this year so but it's in such a good place because I'm are not you comfortable. comfortable in that or are you chomping on the bit to move on <laughs> Oh, no, I'm really comfy. I've been doing this for so many years now. I've yeah. got buckets of training. I don't feel like, oh, God, if I don't start now. So he was like, just, you know, let's get yeah. to September and you want to be in this position in September. And then we're going to do quite, you know, different for everybody as well. Anybody listening, this is very different. My background's different from, you know, Tom, Dick, Harry standing next to me. Yeah. My what I want to practice, my experience, et cetera, is all different. So that's the other hard thing about training for this sort of race is that everybody's skill set is different. So what you need to work on will be very different. But we did talk about things like 10 hours out, come home, just get your drop bag out, bivy outside for the night and then go out again for another 10 hours. Oh my after. goodness me. <laughs> this is incredible. Part of me um, thinks it's, that sounds awesome, but then also that is quite dreadful. For, for, for adults who have other things apart from running, that is quite... Who, are, who has other things <laughs> <laughs> uh but anyway so the next so the next and um, september and sort of early october i'm going to be following a sort of 100 mile training plan basically mm. i'm going to work on getting that when i did that run with kim i was like i need to become a runner again as well because i'm really good at hiking up hills yeah uh all day <laughs> like heidi uh, blah, blah, blah. but um i want to as well play on my strength of being getting those hips back working get those glutes back working and being able yeah. to at the sort of strength so i'm going to do a bit more doing put in a run a uh, sort of moderate run every week just to remind the body that it can move yeah. a little bit faster than a 15 minute mile um and just basically do a sort of 100 mile plan for the next six weeks and then in october we'll start looking i'm also looking at all the strength work looking at how much i'm going to do the pack all those sort of other little sessions i'll talk about week on week i won't go into them but it was so good i feel so much better i feel like now I've got a plan. Now I know what I'm doing. And I've got um, a bit more uh, organization rather than the last couple of months, which has just been throw stuff in the fire and see what happens. That's good. I'll have to watch your Strava and copy you, <laughs> copy what you do for 100 yeah. mile training. <laughs> I've been on the bike, got back on the bike, got back in the gym, feeling like a little bit back to my normal self again. Had been a doing the battle ropes. So the battle. Battle ropes. They do have battle ropes, but they're not often set out. I like a sled push. Do you ever do oh. that? I like that. Um, yeah, so all fun, just counting the days till they go back to school. I was just saying to Gary that weeks, I've, I've got, when is it? When do they go back? Eight days. Oh, was it? Okay. Nine days. They have been on holiday since the 28th of June, Gary. The 28th of June. That is a long time. That is a long holiday. Anyway, I was just saying to Gary, I've I've only got two at home today, and I've left their lunch out with clean from over the top, and a high bag, carb lunch. And it's a high carb lunch. So then they've got and a big bag of crisps, and I said, just put some crisps onto your plate 
when 12 o'clock don't have your lunch before 12 and we were laughing going we bet all those crisps go um and then they've got a, they've cycle got a minute to go <laughs> oh, I don't mind. yeah they'll be we'll hear them come in in a second and then they've got to cycle themselves down to ski training because i'm working so i don't mind they can eat the family pack of barbecue crisps if they want they're not my favorite classic as long as they don't have the salt and vinegars um yeah, anyway yeah what about you bit of running yeah, a lot more running actually. Um, I have been, yeah, I've just got this little five mile loop of the village, and I think I've probably been doing that every day actually, just with the dog in the morning, then maybe walking him in the evening. I don't think I've been doubling up, uh, just doing that. It's just a bit more movement, which has been good. Definitely improving the quality of food that I'm eating, which is, I do feel better for it. And like yourself, I've been back on the bike. I've done a few um, Zwift sessions, nothing major. What's your, what's your workout plan of choice at the moment? Oh, ones, oh, goodness me, I can't remember what it is. I just did something. Um, I might actually, I was kind of going to the dark side. I might try, is it the tax? They have like a Zwift thing, don't they, as well? So I'll have a look at that. Um, I don't know if it's worth me paying for Zwift, but if there's something, I think there's some free workouts on this tax. So if I just kind of do two or three of them a week, not a formal plan. I don't know. I'll see how I go with that. I'm just thinking about that. And I've also been thinking, what happens if I don't get in the Lakeland 100, the ballots? When is the ballots coming up? Is it the 1st of Yeah, pretty much 1st of September. And then I don't think you wait long before you hear if uh, you are in or not. And I think the 100 runners... Oh, I'm not too sure, actually, because we're banging on about with every week on the bloody podcast. If I just kept quiet, but usually if you go into the 100 ballots, it's pretty much guaranteed you're, you're getting in with the kind of amount of people that enter that. But yeah, what do I do if I don't get in? And the one that keeps coming up on my timeline on Facebook is the ETS. <laughs> but it's me, I think, this year. So it's a few months. Oh, is it? I, I think it's a bit earlier um, than this this year's one i think i could be wrong with that but yeah i don't want to travel too fast that's kind of partly put me off uts and also the reckies and oh there's definitely a few reckies so maybe something a bit northern i don't, I don't know um but things sell out you know hard is pretty close to me and i'm fond of that race but i'm pretty sure that will have sold out and again that's another may race I'd, so i think i prefer something more june uh july -ish. so fingers crossed get the lake 100 and I don't have to worry. This is the um, choice of doing the charity place too. So, and I don't think it's a huge amount of money and it's, you know, wonderful causes that the money goes to. So I think it's 99% Lakeland. 100 I went to see, which is quite different for me. I went to see Justin, um, who did Valencia with me and he's a lot of good running friend, Justin. He likes racing motorcars too. So I went to watch that on Sunday. George and I and a couple of other friends went. It was great. Totally I've never done anything like that, Eddie. I've never, I'm not a petrol head at all, but yeah. Hey, cars, what sort of cars do you mean? Oh, well, there's everything. So that the Caterhams, it could be something like a souped up Ford Focus um, to really, really expensive cars, uh, the whole shebang and motorbikes too. And wow, motorbikes going on a track, that makes a racket. And it's pretty, as soon as I got in, I got out the car, I was like, oh my God, I can hear this noise. And it, could, it was just, it was really exciting. Um, but I think I said to you the day, it's, it's, it was quite similar to cross country, but a complete different demographic. What else did we do? I did Lakeland. Yeah, we kind of celebrated our Lakeland 100 achievements and went out for a few beers. And that's kind of what I meant about drinking beer and not having a good night's sleep because I did not sleep well. <laughs> so I only had four beers. I'm such a lightweight. Oh, um, I thought I would be on those tables dancing, throwing my pants <laughs> around after four beers, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> but it was great. It was great. Aaron was there, Lisa and Neil, and a few of them, Mark and his wife. Uh, it was nice just to kind of chat about, but you know, you go to a pub and it's so noisy. You're not really chatting, having this nice little conversation. You're just shouting at each other for three hours. So, but yeah, it was wonderful just to do that. And that kind of draws a line under that. And what else? Yeah. Oh, I did a, my little YouTube channel. I always talk about my YouTube channel, kind of hoping that people actually tune in, but they don't. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> But I thought, well, I'll ask people what they want me to create. This is one of the rules of YouTube. Don't make content you think people want to watch. Make content that people want to watch. And so I thought, well, I'll ask people what they want me to create. I thought that's quite a good thing. You can do like a poll on YouTube. And it turns out they want me to do um, vlogs, which kind of terrified me um, because that means I've got to think about... I've always been resistant to blogs because I thought... 
Well, I'm quite self-conscious. And B, what have I got to say? Um, so I thought I'm not going to go around. Find enough to say for like an hour and a half every week, Gary. Yeah, so well, this is <laughs> well. It's kind of hard because I do say, you know, I'm not really like, this confident person. Then I do this podcast every week, so it's kind of a bit confusing, I suppose, for people. But if I, I think the thread will be training, maybe for the late hundred. So there's some connection, maybe some relevance to people. Um, and just see how the journey goes. So that might be, if I do it, it's going to take me a little while to get my head around me doing it and putting myself out there like that. Uh, but yeah, if there's some kind of relevant connection, then maybe that's something I'll do. And yeah, hopefully, if you more people might watch the channel. <laughs> that's, I suppose, the main... You know, but YouTube's funny. You can use it as like a, a diary. So the vlog could be anything. If you don't care about people watching it, you just do whatever you want or put movies up without it, whatever you want. But if you do actually want people to watch it, you've got to be mindful about what you put out there. So we will see what happens. Yeah, I was really surprised though, vlogs. That is not what I was expecting. Cause... I love a vlog. When I'm on Swift on my bike and I have to just, I'm just doing an easy one. I can't do it if I've got any session because there's too much fighting and panting. <laughs> Uh, I follow a few random people and I watch their vlogs and I get way too invested in their lives and their dogs and I suppose oh. it's like the podcast, isn't it? Yeah, it's very time <laughs> These people, they're so professional. I don't know how they do because I know how long these things like take. Professional, professional 10 minutes worth of all this must yeah. take hours making, editing all the footage. Tell me about it. It does take hours. So yeah, it could be once a week. If there's like loads of content, it could be more times a week. Maybe I do it once and think I'm not doing that again. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how we... on the Facebook group, let us all have a good look and we'll get you some feedback, Gary. We'll see. We'll Day see. in the life of Gary from the podcast. Oh. <laughs> morning, everyone. I'm just having my morning dump. <laughs> They're very repetitious. You know, you, you'll know, like, you know, generally for regular folk, life is pretty repetitious. So there's no private well, jets. Gary, it is wild, as we know. <laughs> You and I live in the fast lane, but I mean, for normal people, like we live. Yeah. Um, like and I both are like, we're both like got this like eyeball thing at the end of the summer going, oh, we're done. We're done with <laughs> we'll survived. We survived. Children twittering at us, and we're at that age. Your kids are older, so they've sort of moved through, but our kids do not stop talking yeah. from the moment. Yeah until they get up, until they go to bed. And now they're going to go going to bed later and later. And we hear them coming down the stairs when we put them to bed. And it's like nine o'clock, just give us half an hour. And they come, wait, yeah. what's, it, what's this, what's this, what's this? Oh my God, she's naked. Oh my God, what are they doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, we're just trying to have a conversation. And they're like, what are you talking about? What did she say? Did yeah, she say that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, enjoy it, because soon they won't want to talk to you. Yeah, <laughs> this is it. You know, another year, they'll be like, I'll be knocking on their door going, do you want to talk about what more yeah. time? Do you want to come down? Oh, and the door no, slamming starts. The so. door slamming. We did have a going up the stairs today because Danny McCaskill, the world mountain bike or something in his oh, yeah. town. Yeah. You know? Oh, he like, does all the stunts, to, doesn't he? We've got to go down at seven and get his autograph. I'm like, that's oh, my training time. So I was like, no, we, we don't need to do that, do we? Oh, you've ruined my life. My one chance to meet the world <laughs> mountain bike. Oh, my God. He was in my way when I was trying to do my run last night of the road, so I don't have a lot. Of, anyway, he's got to be about our age. He's not a kid anymore, is he, Danny McCaskill? I've seen him. It's a bit of uh, uh, right. Let's talk about some races. Oh, well done. Are you going to read this one out? Yeah, she did it. Alison Walker, my goodness me, she did <laughs> take that. I don't know. I was worried that we'd jinx her after we've kind of mentioned she was in the she was gonna finish. When you see people get in the depth of that race, I know she had to walk it in. She put on Instagram, she had to walk it in a bit. When you see people like really properly in the depths, I think most are going to finish barring incident. Yeah, the yeah, barn injury. But yeah, she did. It was really great to see. So well done, Alison. Race across Scotland champion. And it was nice to see Jo. I enjoy Jo Meek's uh, social media. She's got quite a good tone. I enjoy that. But she was um, at the Mahon Ultras Sky Race. She said it was the first Sky Race. And she came in sixth lady and 45th overall. Chewed her up and spat her out. That's what she said. <laughs> Whenever I see these races and I see, like, the professionals that I've raced when they come and, you know, deem to run around the trail races around here, and I think, oh. <gasps> Oh my god! They like you can't get over like how good that result is. Yeah. Because it's so they're so hard these races, uh, unbelievably hard, and the standard of performance is so hard. And she's competing against people that will be full time training. That's right. Yeah. Time. She's a physio. She had Mike. She had a super busy uh, Commonwealth Games. So yeah, it's really good people, seeing people juggle and still crushing it. 
We also had the Scaffell Marathon. Christian Jones won it in three hours 27 and Nicola Jackson in four hours eight. You'd probably like that one, Gary. On your Yeah, yeah. I think book. I would. Um, I love that part of the country, obviously. And I think it's part of the Golden Trail is it umbrella? yeah i'm sure i saw that somewhere on social media um i could be wrong with that but um i did look on the golden trail series website and there was nothing on it but uh i saw it somewhere else so i think it was high terrain events or something like that but yeah i'd be curious what the connection is there but yeah well done everybody awesome this week claire whittingham joined us and talked about the devastating loss of a baby at just 24 weeks I've got to say, Eddie, I was a bit really nervous about this um, interview. I, I'm not comfortable with uncomfortable conversations, but I think it's so important to share these stories. But the subject is super sensitive. So if you want to skip, maybe jump forward about 40 minutes or so to get past the interview. We don't go, there's not a lot, we don't go into sort of massive details. It's much more about how her and her partner Kaz have overcome that tragedy and moved forward so it's a very uplifting and positive story but obviously some people will find it a bit upsetting so yeah as Gary said jump forward if it's not for you Hi Claire, thanks for coming on the podcast today and sharing your story with us. All of our guests get these questions first of all and they are where are you, what's the view from your window and how have you been for a run today? Hi there, nice to meet you all. So I'm um, in Cheshire in the northwest of England. My view from my window is really not exciting. I'm sat in my little oh. home office set up in my spare room so it's just of the shared yard and other people's washing lines. <laughs> Um, and no, I is have not. Is there out already today? Or uh, no, anyone? there's not. Not today. <laughs> uh, they're, not early, they're not early hangers out like I am. No, I, no, I am as well. But no, the, <laughs> nobody else seems to be. Yeah, so that's my view this morning. No, I haven't been for a run this morning. My wife has. I haven't managed it. I'm going to go after work today. Is that typical? You, you would be a, an evening runner? I prefer running in the mornings. Um, but that only really happens at weekends, to be honest. It's easier work-wise to get out after work than it is before work. If I can manage it at lunchtime, I do quite like a long lunch to go for a run. But yeah, oh, yeah. typically it's an good. after after work run in the week. Is it still baking hot in Cheshire? It is in my house. It's not cooled down in my house yet. Um, but outside is a much nicer temperature. So I'm looking forward to that because I, I cut a run short over the weekend because I just don't do heat. At all. It's, yeah, it's been super hot in yeah. for UK at least. My goodness, it's not been yes. good. In, in yeah. Cheshire, are you tripping over footballers where you live? Are they <laughs> not quite? I'm not in the posh parts of Cheshire, oh. so we're not far away. They're in sort of villages on the outskirts of where where we are. Um, occasionally on a train because they have to come through where I live to go down to London on a train for my sports related things. But no, not particularly. They don't come round the lanes in their big Land Rovers and their <laughs> private number plates. Yeah, they do. <laughs> uh, I used to live near Brighton and there used to be a lot of uh, like gated communities yeah. and they just pull round, come round the lanes in their massive cars. You'd be in the hedgerow. That you don't need for a little lane at all. <laughs> no, you need never a four-wheel seen, drive. Never seen mud and it's never... <laughs> been off tarmac in its life uh anyway th claire thank you so much for reaching out um for coming on the show today we are we're looking forward to hearing your story um a very brave story uh and the journey that you're currently on and the challenge that you and your wife uh incredible challenge that you set yourselves um and how we as fellow runners can sort of help you and support you um not only perhaps um, with giving a little bit of money towards a charity that you're supporting, but just hearing your story as well and perhaps people that have been in the same position or perhaps no friends or family that have been in the same position. Um, sharing is sometimes the best way to not only get over grief, but to, um, to people hear this sort of story and know that they're not alone is really important as well. So I'll hand it over to you and let you sort of perhaps tell your journey over the last year and where you are now. No problem. Um, so just before lockdown hit, we started our fertility journey, which as a same sex couple, we knew was going to involve help anyway. Mm -hmm. um, we hit a hurdle at the first point because um, we ran some tests. It was going to be me that was carrying the child if we were lucky enough to get pregnant. Um, but at the first lot of tests, we realised that there was actually an issue. 
Um, so I had to have my fallopian tubes out, which then dictated what route we were going down and it was going to have to be IVF because there were no other options available to us. Um, lockdown hit, so it caused a bit of a delay in that. Um, so a few years after we actually started our journey, we had a couple of rounds of IVF in quick succession, the first of which um, failed before we even got to a transfer point, none of the eggs fertilised, which I didn't actually realise was a thing. I assumed that if it was going to fail, it was going to be a negative pregnancy test, not that there could be an issue before that point. And then we had a second round quite close after that because we wanted to just start again. Um, and that was the best thing for us to do. Um, we were lucky enough the second time um, that we did get a successful pregnancy test um, and everything seemed to be going quite well initially. You have an early pregnancy test with IVF, with private fertility clinics, um, which was the route we had to go down. So at seven weeks, we were discharged to the NHS, everything fine. Um, and then it all started to go not quite so fine after our 12 week scan where they couldn't do all the measurements they wanted to do. We didn't know whether that was a bad thing or not. They didn't really make it seem like it was just that baby wasn't quite in the right position. Yeah. So they booked me in for some blood tests at 16 weeks um, just to check for some things they couldn't do originally. Um, and after that appointment, I then got a call to push our 20 week scan forward 18 weeks um, because they were a bit concerned that our baby might have spina bifida at that point. We had a scan at 18 weeks um, and then we were referred to um, a fetal medicine unit at a specialist hospital um, because they were really concerned about the size um, of our baby. We got to fetal medicine at St Mary's in Manchester um, and then we had weekly scans from that point onwards. Um, she was very small, we found out we were having a little girl. She was very small, um, we knew the severity of the situation, they offered us a termination multiple times and said that that was an option for us if we wanted to, um, that our chances weren't great but we, we weren't giving up. Um, they were the only words my wife said in the room with the consultant was we've got this far, we're not giving up on her. If there's a chance that she can make it, we're, we're going to try for that. Mm -hmm. um, so we were actually only aiming to get to about 26 weeks. Um, we were going to be booked in for a cesarean really early to try and give her the best chance possible in a neonatal unit. Um, we didn't quite make it. We had a scan at around 24 weeks and she'd gone. Mm -hmm. um, so then we had to had to give birth, I had to go through a natural labour, they induced me, we were in hospital for several days um, and that's where we found out about an awful lot of charities and equipment that I'd never heard of before in my life, never come across. Um, we had to go to a different hospital than we would have done because of Covid, our local maternity unit hasn't actually opened again yet. Um, it was used as a Covid ward and it hasn't reopened so we were a bit further away and we were in a hospital that had a piece of equipment called a cuddle cot, um, which we'd never heard of. It's a piece of cooling equipment that means that bereaved families can spend time with their baby when they're born. If a hospital doesn't have that equipment, they will have to take your baby away within a few hours of them being born because they just can't keep the body cool enough. Yeah. Um, having the cot means that they don't need to rush you out. I had to stay in hospital for a couple of days anyway because of some blood pressure issues with me, um, but it meant that they didn't need to take her away, that she could oh, be with us the entire time that we were in the hospital. So the Cuddle Cot itself in Stepping Hill Hospital, which is where we were, was funded by a charity called Four Louis, um, who we hadn't heard of, but they have helped us an awful lot since that happened. So that was in September last year. Um, they funded that. They also, we got brought lots of different blankets and stuff that we could use to wrap her up in. And the one we chose actually was from them. Um, and they also provide memory boxes um, for any stage of miscarriage and also baby loss and child loss up to the age of 18. So we've got one of their memory boxes that the hospital gave us to leave with, which had things like a little teddy bear in. It had two of them, one that we could leave with her and one that we could take away. It had a little kit so that we could do hand and footprints of her, just little things so that we could take something away of her, which I know not everybody wants to do, but the options there and it, if those options weren't given to us and somebody told us that we could do all these things, 
yeah. we wouldn't because you don't know what to do in that situation and yeah. it's all a bit of a blur anyway so having trained bereavement midwives there that give you the options and they said to us we knew we wanted to hold her we wanted to see her um, but they did say that if I wanted to do one thing, my wife wanted to do another, that's absolutely fine. Yeah. And if we said no, they would keep asking us not to be rude because we would said no, but so that we knew that if we changed our mind, we could, because you're not going to get that chance again afterwards. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we said yes to everything and we knew we were going to do that. We discussed that before we'd even gone into hospital. Um, but I think because of our situation and we knew that things weren't going very well, we had had time to think about some of those things whereas other families wouldn't so having the memory boxes and little prompts so that people can have ideas as to what to do will really help and make sure that people don't have any regrets about what they do when they have a baby in those situations Mm. Um, and we were lucky enough to be I mean lucky is a really weird word to use in the circumstances but to be in a hospital that had a private suite that had a bereavement suite so that we could the cast my wife could stay with me the entire time we were in hospital and that we were off the main part of the ward so we didn't yeah. have to see anybody else we didn't have to hear anybody else giving birth it was our own private area and the upkeep of them is generally by charities such as for louis um, yeah. or local charities to the hospital and um, so we knew we didn't know what we wanted to do but we knew as soon as we left that we wanted to be doing something for our daughter she didn't have the chance to make an impact on the world and we were going to do something for her we just haven't decided what that was and there's so many baby loss charities out there and so many that we've heard of that we've been in touch with since but for us it was the cuddle cot it was the fact that a charity had paid for that piece of equipment and had given us a gift of time and something that no other charity no other person in the world would be able to give us Mm -hmm. so we knew that that would be our main focus be able to support for louis in what they do for their hospitals um and one of the first things we did was just ask the question because we didn't know what cuddle cots were ask the question of who does have them are the people waiting for them um and there's currently i can't remember the stat off the top of my head i think it might be 38 hospitals just on their waiting list oh for a cuddle cot oh i thought you were going to say there was 38 with them there's no. there's not no there's, there's a waiting ho- list how many hospitals have cuddle cots um, I don't know. I mean, a lot of them must do if there's 38 on the waiting list. But I mean, 38 on a waiting list is 38 too many. And yeah. most just have one. So for Louis are actually based in Sunderland and they've got a couple of spare cuddle cots that they have so that if a hospital near them gets in touch to say, we've got a family in, we've got another one coming in. Yeah. They can drop a cuddle cot off so that they've got two pieces of equipment there. Because if another family had been in hospital the same weekend that we were, one of us wouldn't been, have been able to have this. Oh my goodness me! So, how much did you did you do you know how much uh, that uh, cuddle cot cost? To I presume there's is there an upkeep cost once um, it's provided or so they cost one thousand seven hundred and fifty pounds from the manufacturer, and that's for the Moses basket type one. They do also do cuddle blankets that are for older children that I believe are five thousand um, pounds, and then there's obviously parts to them. There's not sort of a general maintenance cost but there are spare parts that will cost if things do break on Mm -hmm. on those so they're not a cheap piece of kit and it's not something that obviously the NHS have an awful lot of things to pay for and can't pay for everything so it's not something that as standard would be in a maternity or neonatal suite. You mentioned choice and timing everybody has a different like approach and what they want in situations and to the, the, the gift of time I think this my goodness me I, I didn't know about a cuddle cot until reading uh, about your story I can imagine that time that you've got to spend with your daughter um was pr- is a totally priceless and has helped you hugely in yeah. meeting her and spending time with her and then being able to say goodbye and move on and now driving you forward in the challenge as well because you've got that connection and because life works in terrible ways but the fact that that's happened to you now that you're doing this and hopefully a number of families through the money that you're going to raise are going to be able to have that gift as well so I think you're amazing I think that's incredible that you've turned that around so quickly and are now um punishing yourselves and <laughs> doing something crazy <laughs> doing something crazy. so let's talk about so 
after you came home, how long, um, what, what, how did this challenge form? Um, um, sort of what, what did you think? I expect quite soon you were like, we need to do something. We need a goal and a We knew we needed to do something and it was what we did really. Um, one of my wife's friends happened to have just got back from cycling the way of the roses and I could see cogs turning in Cassie's head as she was thinking about something. And then her next sentence was, do you think we could run it? <laughs> and I obviously just said, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we both do run. I mean, not not that brilliantly. I'm of a back of the pack runner. I've run on and off for over 10 years. Um, I'm faster than when I started, but I'm by no means a speedy runner and still haven't managed to break a 30 minute 5k which I really would like to do at some point um Cass is a very different speed to me which has made training a bit difficult because we're going to have to do so much separately because yeah. we are just very different runners um neither of us had run further than a half marathon before wow um so <laughs> it's a very silly challenge I mean a marathon probably would have been the words that should have come out of our mouths but we wanted to raise a lot of money we wanted to do something big and sort of make something of it really. So we have decided to run um, a cycle route called the Way of the Roses, which goes across the country. Um, it goes from Morecambe to Bridlington. We're doing it the other way round, um, which means running against the wind. Yeah, probably not the best idea. <laughs> That's exactly the same. I was like, <laughs> Um, must... But log logistics wise, it made more sense. So my wife's family are from the South Lakes. Um, so finishing in Morecambe is oh, yes. a better place for us to finish. It means more friends and family can be around at the end. It means we've not got as far to sit in a car yeah. to travel somewhere at the end. So it just logistically, it made more sense to us. And um, it's going to be hideous whatever we do. So running into the wind or not into the wind, I don't think we don't know any different. <laughs> so. <Yeah. laughs> Um, we'd originally looked at, we're doing it in October because October is Baby Loss Awareness Month. We earmarked Baby Loss Awareness Week to finish on the Friday, which is um, a wave of light day, which is quite a special day in sort of the baby loss community. But again, you've got to think of logistics when you're doing something this big and doing it over the October half term just meant that we could have more people around to support us in doing it so we're actually doing it in the half term week in october so the end of october and um, we're doing it in five days so it is going to be an ultra marathon every day they are big um, days wow that is... they are the big days and there's some very big hills um but we wanted to do something big so what was it i, I think i read doing. on the on the page it was like is it two two thousand five hundred meters of elevation or something yeah yeah around that you <laughs> think Claire's slightly in denial about this? She's like, stop telling me the numbers, Gary. I don't need the numbers. <laughs> I love the details. <laughs> Make it a good talking point, though. Everybody we've told thinks we're crazy, and I think we probably are, but that's fine. But I mean, running was as soon as we got out of hospital, I'd been running all the way through pregnancy. Um, I had some blood pressure issues and I asked about what I could and couldn't do exercise wise and they did tell me to, that I I could I had to be careful of how long I was running for and obviously it turned into more of a plod than it did a run but getting out and moving was helping my blood pressure and it was helping me mentally at that point um I wasn't fit for running as soon as we got out of hospital but in one of my doctor's appointments not long after getting out she told me I could work my way up to a park run and um, I took that to mean I could do park run that Saturday that's probably not what she meant but that is what I did <laughs> I heard too Claire that is what I heard work yeah, well, that meant like two nights sleep yeah I love the pit train is on I'm ready that is what I did I walked the hills I thought let's be sensible but that is what I did I went back and tentatively ran that weekend um Cass did a half marathon the month after and sort of threw herself into training for that and because running was what we turned to running was the logical thing have you set a fundraising target Claire yeah so our fundraising target is ten thousand pounds um we want to be able to donate a few cuddle cots and also be able to sort of have some money there for the charity to 
I mean, they have said to us that if we want to just pay for cuddle cots with it, we can do, but obviously they have so many other outgoings and yeah. memory boxes to pay for, et cetera, um, that we just want to at least have a cuddle cot in our daughter's memory and then the money used for whatever else the charity needs to use it for. Um, and we're also donating a thousand pounds separately to directly to the hospital and the bereavement suite that we were at for the upkeep just of that particular room so we had a few things in mind but yeah our our main fundraising target is ten thousand. so we have a website um, and we've got a just like giving link on there so that has been live since we started the training and announced our crazy challenge um and we've passed the four thousand mark on that so far so it is yeah. it is going quite well yeah amazing you mentioned training how's it how's it going it's an awkward time to be asking that question just after a heat wave. It's not going yeah. as well as <laughs> we wanted it to be at this stage. Um, we're doing very separate things because it took me a lot longer to get back into running. Obviously, Cass was just running. Um, so the logistics of the actual challenge, I mean, she's running all of it. Um, I plan on running as much of it as I can do but there will be more breaks in it for me than her. So our training, we're following different training paths. Okay. Um, we've both had bits of niggles. Yeah. Um, Cass has had a bit of a heel niggle that she is over now, but it did knock a few weeks off with some lower mileage for those weeks. Um, I was silly enough to think I could play football at the same time as training for this and sprained my ankle a couple oh, of weeks Claire. ago. Football <laughs> running... No, no, I know. No, no, no. No, <laughs> no you cannot use those hamstrings. There's no fast fibers. There's no movement. Once you become a runner, you can only go in a straight line, Claire. Uh, I mean, I do play football, and the sensible part of me was going to say, let's not go back until after I've done this. But I thought I'll just go to training, not really do contact, but I still yeah. managed to sprain my ankle. So that's made that decision for me that we'll go back to football after October. Um, so that put me out for a couple of weeks as well, just with slower, shorter runs. And then we've not done an awful lot on the hot days because it's just not worth exhausting ourselves for it. I don't do very well in heat anyway, never mind trying to run in it. So now it's cooler. Um, this week will hopefully get a bit back on track. Yeah. And would you do any, like, uh, um, say, a structured sessions, like an interval session, or are you just mind just mindful about getting the miles miles done? Um, a mixture of both, getting the miles in and for us hills as much as anything with the elevation that's going to be in the week that, I mean, we're in no way going to replicate that or even close to that, but making sure that we don't avoid hill training in our training to make sure that we're hopefully in a position to be able to do that come the challenge. I do laugh about football. If you could be injury free, I think football is an awesome fart lick session um, yeah. but it's, it's quite risky though <laughs> you've mentioned logistics a couple of times are you just got like an army of people moving across the country with you with the uh as, as the challenge goes mainly Cass's mum so Cass's mum is she works in a school which is why we're doing this in half term um she is going to drive with us the whole week so she's going to be very bored bless her she says she's going to bring lots of books and hopefully be fluent in a language by the end of it um but we've sort of worked out some checkpoints that she's going to be at um for refueling so that we've not got to carry very much running yeah um to a for, to aim to see her every sort of 10 to 15 kilometers which we may or may not need to really stop it may just need, need to be put in a few more jelly babies in a pocket and refilling some water or it could be stopping and actually getting changed going to the loo having a pep talk um but yeah she's <laughs> going to be driving alongside us the whole time and um, stopping at the next checkpoints and then we've got my family as well that are going to be doing similar um, and having a few main checkpoints that they're going to come and see us at um and hopefully some people that are going to join us en route and just jog a bit of it with us cycle alongside us just so that we're at least seeing people at yeah. some point in the yeah, journey yeah. <laughs> and is it quite i i don't know the trail <clears throat> is it pretty like a nice way marked path or is it a bit sketchy in places it's a bit sketchy in places it is marked um but it's marked in the way of some of them are just sort of stickers on lamppost kind of thing so it's yeah. a case of 
have, have somebody stuck a sticker over the top of it to have someone yeah. peeled it off um so we have i mean one of the parts that we were most nervous about is running through york um, in that it actually goes through the city so how clear would that be so we did go there a couple of weeks ago to to trial that bit and see and there were only a couple of bits where we've made a note of you need to turn by this post box because it wasn't very clear um, but for the most part the bits that we've trialed and been to have a look at it is clear and we're hoping that obviously running rather than cycling we're going to be going slower so should be less likely to miss okay. any turnings don't forget we don't really to... want to add any kilometers on if we can help it no my goodness <laughs> you really don't want to <laughs> don't forget to pop in the bettys though when you go through your kits and rascals or some macaroons it was pretty tasty i do like that <laughs> Yeah, if you need Gary to point out, he'll have a look on the route for all I've the I've got snacks. all the treats <laughs> nailed down, I know. He's not been on the trail, but he'll know the cafes. <laughs> well, that's important. <laughs> yeah, it is important. Uh, we've talked a little bit about, you've already said about um, people can pop onto your Just Giving. Any other support people can give you? Any ways other uh, people can get involved? Um, so we've or... set ourselves up on social media on everything apart from tiktok because i'm too old to understand how that works well yeah that's definitely i'm sure gary's heading down the tiktok route but this is oh, really we not don't talk about it. <laughs> no, it's, it's not for me um but we have set ourselves up on instagram on facebook and on twitter as well so we are quite active on the three um so you can find us um under the way the roses or the way the roses challenge on any of those things um and we are updating regularly on there as how our training's going whether a run's been a good run or a bad run um and for us as much as it is raising money it's also raising an awareness because like i said before we haven't heard of the charities we haven't heard of a cuddle cop before so telling more people about it telling our story and our daughter's story um means the world to us and hopefully we'll reach some people that need to hear it um and the running community in particular of anything any advice we don't know what we're doing we've jumped in feet first into a challenge we probably are not ready for but then would we ever be ready for that it's a bit stupid oh, i was thinking that as you were talking <laughs> i was thinking um right when we school ends i'm gonna say to claire you know i'm here ask me anything i've done loads of multi-days and stuff like that and then i'm also like but i also love your spirit of adventure that you guys are just gonna mum's coming mum's coming along in the car <laughs> yeah. with a duolingo we're just gonna and go I for it yeah i love that i love that and i think that is almost what you need as well you need yeah. to just it needs to be an adventure and you're all the chapping and the blisters and the tears yeah. is what you need yeah you, you need to get into almost like the pain cave and um and come out the other side well you sort of touched on the fact that it's just as important raising money as raising awareness and perhaps there are people listening that have gone through similar situation or going through a similar situation Situation. is there anything that you would perhaps say to people that um have has really helped you um running seems to like been your sort of savior over the past few months i think running has and i think communication as well is key i mean we didn't tell anybody apart from close family that we were going through an ivf journey at all so we've done a full 180 flip here in telling everybody about our daughter and i think that talking about it helps i mean it's not going to help everybody and it's certainly we weren't at a point that we could talk like this at the beginning it has sure. yeah. it has come and some days are a lot harder than others in trying to tell a story but for us just being able to tell people about her about the fact that she existed really does help us and helps other people realize i gave birth to her and i think that's something that a lot of people initially a lot of people were shocked that that happened we told people that we'd lost her and an assumption of losing a baby before full term is is a miscarriage and i think people think of an early miscarriage which even then can be really traumatic so yeah. i think there's just not enough awareness out there of what people actually go through and the impact that's had on people's lives and from talking to people that this has happened to um, and finding people that i know and that, that has happened to and i didn't know that um that a simple question of what's your child's name or what were they like like talking to them like you would anybody else that's got a child that's living and is here um, and how much that is appreciated by people so yeah just talking and 
for me running but i mean i think exercise more generally finding something that is a go-to that isn't just sitting and blocking yourself off in your house you two are amazing we can't wait now i'm going to follow this journey i'm going to start giving you some instagram views but uh the whole of the run to the hills community once they hear the story i'm sure we'll get behind you and um hopefully you'll have some time maybe um cass's mum will get on tiktok and be able to give us a daily update <laughs> when uh, <laughs> she'll be crushing the instagram stories it is i've recruited my sister for a bit of a live instagrammer during the actual week because obviously we're not going to be doing it but she's going to be doing a lot of updates on the actual challenge while we're doing it um, and beforehand with the training we're going to be doing that ourselves but our social media will be up to date with all our pain for people to see <laughs> And what if people want to come along and share some, just strangers, you know, have heard your story today and they want to come and share, share some miles with you. Is, is that is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. If people want to get in touch and can arrange sort of somewhere along the course that they might want to want to run. It's a beautiful route, whether we'll be able to appreciate that while we're doing it or not, I don't know. I think maybe a, a GoPro attached so that we can watch it back and see how pretty the view was, was might be slightly better. Yeah. But it is it is a lovely route to run just Maybe not all of it. <laughs> not all of it. <laughs> You're going to have an amazing time. You'll have an amazing journey. Right, we're not letting you get away. We're not letting you get away without the quick five. Five we've, questions. We've gone maybe a bit easier, but not too easy, have we, this week? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, right, prepare yourself. <clears throat> Do you have a favourite park run course? I am going to go local and say my local Macclesfield park run, which is hilly very hilly so it's a love-hate relationship with it but I think it's good for me I think the hills are good for me and I do I do like it in a really weird way so yeah Macclesfield does it have a good cafe too that's always quite important um it used to be a local pub around the corner but they've just opened a sort of coffee cake cart actually in the park that the park runs oh. in so it's now that Maze. I Dangerous. love a cart, a coffee cart, <laughs> a horse with, box. That's always with good. A, supporting <laughs> a local business as well, yeah. so it's yeah. like all the things in one go. With the cake, like in the like dome yeah. thing, and you know yeah. it's going to be like, oh yeah, my auntie so and so makes that yeah. carrot cake. And you're like, oh my <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> French do not get that. They have. They would dart. They would like. No, you go to the tobac and get your black shot of coffee yeah. Macclesfield Espresso. part run that's what I'm doing pre-spine <laughs> I'm just gonna go straight to Macclesfield yeah <laughs> <clears throat> do you have a favorite bit of running kit uh I'm gonna go Ron Hill leggings classic right I want to talk to you about these because I read on your blog that you need some legging tip okay yeah <laughs> I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you that it's expensive, but I think you're worth the investment that the uh, Sweaty Betty running leggings, they have, they're high waisted, they're long, thick, but not too thick. Amazing foam pocket. Pocket. Yeah. I, yes, I have heard that. You deserve. Sweaty Betty. <laughs> Come on, Sweaty Betty. Reach out. Let's get Sweaty Betty. Let's, uh, let's, let's send them an email. Uh, they're the best ones. They are expensive, but yeah. they, they last. They last. They don't get, you know, you don't wear away bits and you look good. You look good. It's finding ones that don't move. And that is why my go-tos are the Ron Hills because they actually stay up. I mean, so many of them are, they say they're high-waisted, they've got a little tie, they still move. They're still uncomfortable. But yeah, it's finding finding ones that stay that I'm happy with. You make a purchase and then you go for a run and you're like, well, these aren't doing what they said they were going to yeah. do. And then you, you spend... I'll tell you what, the Montane ones are really good too. Are they? If you go three quarter length, which you might want to do in October when it's like, it's it's like you, it's not cold, but you don't want to be in shorts, you don't want to be in leggings. The yeah. three quarter length trail leggings, they've got an excellent foam pocket. They're nice high waisted. I wear them almost every day. I'm going to send you a couple of links after this chat. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to in a couple of weeks on the gram, suddenly you're sporting a pair of <laughs> <laughs> and you've gone wild. Hashtag like, and everything. Hashtag pretty Betty. <laughs> <laughs> and we've digressed. It's the quick five. Number three. A long day on the trail. What, what kind of food are you visualizing? And is there going to be a wrestling? You know, are you going to go fish and chips and cast one to curry? What, 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 yeah, what are you thinking? Um, 
I mean, chips are a good shout. I think we're probably going to both be wanting similar things and I'm feeling chippy pizzas are going to be the two that are calling us at the end of the day. Have you ever had a pizza with chips on it? No. I didn't even think that was a thing. My daughter's, (laughs) that's her favourite pizza. Oh. (laughs) I mean, I'm very traditional with my margarita. (laughs) I don't really go off feast with that. Margarita, maybe the odd bit of pepper or uh, yeah. some sort of vegetable thrown on top, but chip, oh, it's too much white carb for me. Yeah, I don't think carbs. I no. <laughs> it's going to be great. It's it's great. A, yeah, I don't mind it. <laughs> but yeah, it's not something I'd ever order. You the ice cream truck, the bacon hot deer. What is your oh, favourite? pizza chips. Yeah, What's pizza. <laughs> <laughs> a little sweet after your savoury. What's going to be your go-to ice cream of choice? Oh, we're very different on that. For me, it's mint chocolate chip. Classic. always oh, yes. um but Cass always says that i'm eating toothpaste when i do that yeah, um with so that. i think <laughs> for her a mr whippy if it's an actual mr whippy with a flake i am with Cass there oh my gosh me and Cass have got the same snacking choices <laughs> i had some portion control envy last time i did mr whippy i went to the queue and got a small mr whippy and thought oh, that's a bit small and left it at that but then the person behind me got an enormous mr whippy and it was exactly the same money Oh, what? I was not happy. That's I think not fair. Didn't. I know, I know. You're on the uh, you're on your, on the trails. What are you going to distract yourself with? Radio, podcast, or music? Music for me. Um, I listen to podcasts when I'm working, but I have tried a few runs with them, and I I can't get on board with it. Yeah, it's. I think I need I need the beat. I need the music. <laughs> What sort of music are you going for? Um, I won't lie, my uh, song choices are very varied. I'm quite 90s-ish in my uh, playlists. Okay. I like to, I like to go back to... Genre. You could be like Oasis or Steps. It's, uh... <laughs> I mean, that's kind of how my playlist tends to go. There is some Steps on there, there's some Five on there, and then there's... Wrong with five. I've told you about my five concert when I went and Jay knocked himself out on the bar and he went backwards. So then it was a four concert. And Jay's, <laughs> Jay, was, Jay was the best one, wasn't he? He was the best looking one. Oh, it was it was my 21st birthday, so perhaps I was a bit old for going to a five concert. It's funny though, people. I, I can't run with music. I can. It's not like I can't run with music, but it's not because of the beat which just throws me off my run. And I also get a bit too immersed and kind of wildlife or other people freak me out when they just appear from nowhere <laughs> that's because you've only... got like hardcore clubbing music on gary yeah. and trance music Head i only off. ever run with one headphone in so that i can Ooh. still sort of hear nature and you know cars and safety that's and all that as well uh, yeah i only ever run with one in and part of the reason that a lot of my song choice is sort of what it is is sort of the speed of it I've tried sort of more dancier stuff, but it's too fast for the speed that I run. Too much, isn't it? It's too yeah. much. <laughs> and then I feel all out of sync because I'm running slower than the music's going and I don't like it. But yeah, I I run without music quite a lot, but my, my go-to is a bit of 90s probably. Yeah. Right, oh, Claire, thank you so much for coming on the podcast, yeah, sharing... Thanks. Sharing your journey so far, I'm going to say. Um, yes. We really look forward to supporting you in any way that we can. Um, we send you lots of love from the Run to the Hills. Good luck with your training over the next... Um, so how many? It's like two months, pretty much, isn't it? Not even uh, that. Yes, it's about <laughs> two months. Uh, you got we're this. doing We're doing yes. little countdowns first because we're doing the Great North Run. And we're also doing the Manchester Half Marathon. So we're kind of counting down to those, avoiding how close it is to the actual event, because that sounds yeah. a bit nicer mentally. Nice yeah. Distractions. Um, yeah. Yes. I love the demo. Um, everybody listening, Popo, we'll put all the links onto the show notes and onto Facebook. And um, we wish you all the best of luck. But we will also give you a shout out when you're actually doing it when we record the podcast in October. Um, Thank you so much. Look forward to seeing you with your chip pizza butty in. <laughs> welcome at the end uh, <laughs> lots of love to you and good luck with everything over the next couple of months yeah best thank of luck so keep much. in touch Take yes care. will do thank you bye
what a couple of ladies, eh? Oh, my yeah. goodness. Throughout that interview, I felt we sort of really got to know her and she really shared what a personality, super strong, both of them. Um, oh, my goodness me, yeah. We will post all their links. I'm going to post them directly onto the Facebook page when this goes out on Friday so that people can start to follow their challenge. Uh, I know it will resonate with a lot of people, even if they've got no experience of baby loss, but lots of us have been touched by it in some way or friend or some way, but also yeah. just their resilience and doing something for the power of good when they're going through the saddest, darkest times in their life. So I think that sort of life lesson as well, gosh, it makes you realise how lucky a lot of us are uh best of luck claire and cass with your training we'll be yeah, following you and supporting you as well race is coming up well if you're not in chamonix this week gary who are you i tell you what i'm not in chamonix and i'm not going near it come and see come and see and i'm like do you know what i'm so what what really puts me off is the parking i'm like <laughs> yeah I'd really like to be up high and go in, um, especially I'd love to see the elite um, runners come through on UTMB, like the last climb. That would be awesome, wouldn't see it? See them come through Valacine and see them go up. But I just, the, the, just the logistics, um, uh, just it's just too much. Um, but yeah, good luck to anybody in Chamonix doing any of the races. We've got loads of friends of the shows uh running in lots of the uh utmb ccc if it's your first time there soak it all up enjoy it Take my, my timeline is littered with lovely photographs I'm very very jealous but yeah hope you all if you just even expect it have an awesome time enjoy it. the weather seems to be today it's really hot but it's not as hot as it was so fingers crossed there'll be a bit more water on all the courses as well best of luck to anyone doing any of those adventures and we will look forward to reading out the results next week what a race to challenge any of the vistas at uh, UTMB series this week is the Leeds to N Liverpool Canal race. It's actually Liverpool to Leeds this year. 130 miles, Eddie. That's a pretty long way to travel. Um, and you start from the old Hall Street in Liverpool and finish um, at the office lock in Leeds. 130 miles, tall pass, a tall path course following the original Leeds to Liverpool Canal, Britain's longest man-made waterway. Oh, I love a bit of history. Bit of history with a run. Passes through the heartland of the industrial north. The path is surprisingly scenic, uh, as well as the beautiful countryside. The route features the mile-long Burnley embankment, up to 60 feet above ground level. Oh, I see. I just, that, I, I, do all I do all 130 that. miles just for that one mile. That'd be awesome. <laughs> uh, and the amazing Bing Leap 5 Rye Staircase. Oh, both listed amongst the seven wonders of the waterways. What a race. Gary, if you don't get into Lakeland 100, this is your race. This, you know what? This this could be it. Actually, I think, yeah. I I would look forward to seeing you saying that the Bingley Five Rise Staircase is amazing. I think this could be the one, idiot. Yeah. I'll... You go on. You've been banging on about canals, but your money where your mouth is. That's me. This is like an epiphany. I'm in. <laughs> You're in the centre. Him. So what you got? Come up, baby. Mm -hmm. What I got coming up? Uh, I'm just gonna try. I'm doing quite a bit like cross training this week, mainly because I haven't got any childcare, so uh, there's a bit of bike sweating. And my littlest is in swim lessons for half an hour every morning. What can you do in half an hour in a swim lesson? Well, I tell you, not a great deal. Yeah. Uh, it's quite a lot of floating around. And look, mum, I look like a horse, uh, but I can get in and do a bit of aqua jogging <laughs> while she's on. Just do the juggle, the ju the end the of the Strava, juggle. Does it go on Strava? That one. Uh, Everything, not everything, but a most of this construct. <laughs> Mainly because when I have a week like this, the only way I can motivate myself is to be like, right, I'm going to do like 15 hours of training. I'm going to do like 10 hours cross training. It's the only way I can be like, I just watch those hours go up. Just personal, like, come on, come on, imagine yourself. You're three nights into the spine. You're taking Jasmine Paris's record. Let's get on swim for 40 minutes. It's going to make all the difference. But I do find it quite hard to motivate myself for like a 40. I'm like, I'm so. so so easy to go i can't bother to, like at the end of the day and bring gets back about seven and i've got a 45 minute run and i'm like it's so, it's so easy not to go yeah that's so, no one's watching oh should i just miss this one and kicking always the hardest thing is kicking your butt out the door yeah. and then the minute 
five minutes in and you're winning and you're back in life. So I've just got to keep going, not overdo it, which is good because I'm going to childcare, so I can't overdo it. Um, and uh, get through this week. And then next week, halfway through the week, they go back at school and then I'll be binge miling uh, for a couple of days to get my fit. See the bars going up and up and up. Strava. <laughs> Um, I'm helping out at a local uh, triathlon here on the weekend. I'm in charge awesome. of the run course this way. Ale, ale, ale. Uh, it's a kids. There's an. You are legit in course. charge of the running section. I am the legit bottom. the chef. No, I'm not the chief. I'll be at the bottom of a cone. I'll be the cone. <laughs> um, the turnaround point. I'm not even allowed to go to the adults run course. I'm doing the kids one. <laughs> <laughs> uh giving back though gary it's always good to do a little bit of help it. one of my best training mates she organizes all so much organization um and so i'll go and be a code for the afternoon and inspire the next generation as they run around especially kids i love it i absolutely love watching kids do races because there's always the drama because they go off so hard yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we're doing that this weekend and then we have these huge lists it doesn't happen in the uk because the kids in france have to provide like they take paper in um and you buy all their books before they go to school okay. and then you have to cover all their books like the littlest one has to take like five packs of a4 plain paper two boxes of tissues her slippers um the random stuff they have to take in and the special paints and you go around all the shops in town who all supplies so you go are you the shop that you we get this book from and yeah. they're like yes <laughs> um there is one shop where you can take the whole list and they will do it for you but that's quite expensive so i don't do that now i'm an old hand i don't do that <laughs> I've got so all these lists, um, and that'll take a whole day to collect. But also now, third child, she just gets the old paints and the old yeah. pastels. I'm and like, it's like it hasn't got a red. I'm like, it's fine. What are you going to paint in red? It's fine. You don't need it. You can borrow someone else's. So back to school, back to school supplies. What about you? Did you? Oh, say I used to love that. That's really reminiscent. That been at our college as well. Going around all the art shops and oh, I used to love it. All the art shops, go get the right paper. All oh, the stress of it. I tell you what, and the right pencil case, hey Gary. If you don't yeah. get the right pencil case, God, you are yeah, not. I used to really that. enjoy that. I used to enjoy doing that. That was a good time. Oh, do you want to come out and do it? You, you would really enjoy it. You'd love the much. art. I don't <laughs> yeah, I don't enjoy it that much. But for me, start. Oh my God, start training, Eddie. I can't believe it. I've got it's. Well, it's quite light on a, on a if you're like mid training cycle, you'd be okay with this. But straight out of the bat, it's five times five minutes, and a fifteen minute threshold run, and then a one hour forty five. I think I'm more worried about the one hour forty five long run on the weekend. That's quite a long way. Oh, that'll be fine. So is that five by five minutes and then fifteen minute threshold? No, sorry, they're the three different. I suppose they're the three oh, quotes. Okay. I was like, what? What's that's a stupid session? I one thing I did observe from. Lake and hundred training was all that running with Rex. None of even all of it, the apart from the quality sessions, were below easy. So maybe Rex just has to do like a little short loop and then I go off and do the the actual 40 minutes or whatever it should be mm. on my own. Um so I'll be mm. running a bit with a bit more purpose, even on those easy runs. Recovery runs, yeah. I'll I don't I don't mind if Rex is on those ones, but yeah, three quality sessions. So that will be interesting to see how that goes yeah i'm going to try and do a vlog so we'll see how that goes too and the biggest news of the week is my daughter's waiting for a gcse results so we'll get those oh goodness me is it tomorrow thursday. or thursday, thursday isn't it? do the schools get them on wednesday and then they give them to the kids on thursday or is okay it... is that what it is but um yeah i think it is thursday because we booked a meal out so we're either going to drown our sorrows or celebrate um she's super bright she's super bright your daughter though isn't she she, she is bright i know she doesn't listen to the podcast so <laughs> she won't ever listen to this but i i, I said because obviously now you know it's it's like sort of taper time isn't it you start second guessing asking questions have you done all the stuff and i have to say she hasn't wasted her time she hasn't been roaming the streets when she should be studying she's so super diligent so if it doesn't go the way she hopes, um, then it's not for, for how, how much effort yeah, she's putting. Exactly. That's what I say to my kids. As long as the effort's there, yeah. if the school report isn't high-flying, <laughs> <laughs> uh, as long as you put the effort in, um, I'm sure she'll do great. You yeah. can tell us or not next week. Well, you can tell us about the meal out, and then we'll be able to know by the Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I'm this mate. I'm sure she's got far more brains than at least when I put together. So she's she's pretty she's pretty switched on. So yeah, good luck, good luck, everybody. You know, I hope you all get what you want from your GCSEs. Do you think that's our demographic? 16, 17 year olds? Definitely bloggers. <laughs> We're in there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's what this is what they do. They sort of go, the kids sort of get. Oh yeah, it's the old uh... a double flip with a jap my, my my eldest just first which one called this is going, Mum, mum, I did a double flip with a Japanese grab. Like, oh this, wow. Is this meant to me. impress me? I've, and he's I've like, gonna... do you get what it is? I've made a video, you can watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to Google what a Japanese grab is. I'm going to... <laughs> you either think I'm really cool. Which part of this am I? I'm like, oh, come on, Eddie, but watch the video and show interest in the Japanese grab. Uh, right, let's read. Let's read some. Uh, let's read a review. What we got? Juk Hug has left a lovely review. My favorite podcast. I love this podcast and can't wait for it to come out every week. The chat between Eddie and Gary is like listening to old friends and always interested to hear their updates, whether running base or just general life. Do you think Joe Cook likes Japanese growth? It's like 60% <laughs> life, 40% running, I think. <laughs> they have some really inspiring guests and interviews are great with good questions. They also let guests speak, which isn't always the case on some running podcasts. Wow, that is really um, lovely for you to say that because I'm super sensitive. Sometimes we don't because there's time, there's a clock ticking and sometimes we don't usually give the guests, you know, sometimes we can't give the guests enough time um, because the clock's ticking. So it's nice that you appreciate it. We interrupt each other and then we get angry. Edit it out. Eddie, you never got angry. Never. <laughs> <laughs> thanks jug hug get over there like share subscribe we need some more reviews comedy ones that i can read out or, my, or with really long words that gary has to read out but yeah it's your turn this week Kitty. <laughs> if you really like the podcast and you fancy supporting us in a different way there's many different ways you can support us uh pop over to patreon uh www.co.uk Oh, oh, I, tried to pull it, I tried to pull it up and my only other open tab on the computer is my spine equipment 23 page <laughs> list uh, I wonder the, when you first type something in Google what is your search history oh, it, I, I can tell you what it is because it comes up it's my training peaks account it's the spine race and it's the kids ski club uh, web page where I find all the training <laughs> those are the three things how sad is my life um and probably as well as you type into google how do i train for the spine race anyway if you want to pop over to patreon we've got a couple of things set up over there um if you'd like to support the podcast if you would like to oh the dpd van i keep getting sorry if you're interested in this patreon it's outside i'm hoping it's delivering my new trainers or bivy oh, these the um, scarper ones every day is a, a birthday for eddie at the moment and brings it in working he's not here so he's not gonna <laughs> know uh win-win <laughs> anyway pop over to patreon there's a couple of options you can do in there uh if you're interested in getting yeah. more involved in the podcast um whether that's uh asking questions getting involved in the interviews or um perhaps even sponsoring the show or you know anybody that would be interested in sponsoring the show this doesn't change in any way the podcast in any way that you you get our normal twittering it all stays exactly the same it's just another avenue that people can give us a cheer give us support and enables us to maybe look at working at um, some bigger brands in the future etc etc if you've got any questions then ask away and if you are a Patreon member, don't forget to keep checking the page because we might do an announcement. Like we've got a guest coming on and we're reaching out for questions. So yeah keep keep checking the page. Thanks everyone. Is it me? Shall I close? Let's I close I started. Yeah. You definitely started because we did about four takes. Two takes. Two takes. Two takes. Two takes in a stutter. <laughs> Two takes in a stutter. <laughs> that should be on your grave. Uh, <laughs> that was episode 104. Thanks everyone for listening and thank you to Cheer Charge for continuing to support the show and my calorie needs, sending bars to guests, competition winners, and keeping Gary and I fueled in not just our adventures, but also in our everyday needs and hunger, generally being an all-round super support to everyone out on their trails. Have a good week, everybody. I'm Eddie Sutton. And I'm Gary Thwaites. Good luck in Germany. Let's run yeah, to the hill. Good luck. <laughs>